Happy Thursday, Rutgers. I'm Cassandra Sheets. And I'm Eva Nika Kalar. We've got a great show lined up for you. It is September 27th, 2018. Weather Watcher, Max Hazon, will give you the regional and big picture forecast for the day. I'm going to be painting the town scarlet at the Res Life Silent Disco. We will be interviewing Kiwan Kok, the Assistant Director of the Education in the Center of Social Justice. And Professor Usaina Aladu is here to talk about the Future of African Studies Symposium. We have a packed show for you today. It's time to wake up Rutgers. Hello and welcome, Rutgers. It's great to be here on this chilly Thursday morning. We're here to wake you up every Thursday morning this semester with all of the exciting news, events, and weather. Well, Eva, it's exciting to have you on today's show. Yeah, it's really nice to be back after last semester. Yeah, you're back on like your home turf, kind of. This is like your scene. I know, I'm getting like flashbacks, old memories just sitting in this chair all over again. Well, this is exciting, but so tell me, how's the start of your semester been going so far? Well, since syllabus week is over, um, we're getting it, finally getting into the groove of things, finally getting assignments. I have a few exams coming up, but so far it's really nice that I have more structure, I get to study more, I'm getting more into my class topics. Yeah, same for me. I know once I start hitting the library or the academic building that my course load's picked up and that I have a lot more to do. So I'm always going to the library now and I'm always studying. Um, so I know I have exams coming up, just like you said, and no longer just the simple assignments. But what about you, Max? How's your semester been going? Hey, good morning, everybody. So the start of my semester has actually been going pretty well, despite the fact that I'm taking a full load of classes, two jobs, an internship. I'm also on the e-board for the Rutgers University Meteorology Club. But so far, everything's going very well. I'm able to balance my schoolwork, my actual work, and my internship, and just also having a social life. So everything's going very well. Not excited for midterms, but we'll see what's going to happen as we start to head into midterms for me, beginning in about two weeks. Back to you guys. Yeah, that's great. I know I also have a very busy course load and work and internship, so it's definitely all about time management. Yeah, time management is super important, especially if you're a working student and you want your social life and you want to do well in school, actually. So we have so much more to get into, but, we, but before we can get to the rest of the show, let's see how much you know. How many 24-hour libraries does Rutgers have? We'll give you the answer when we come back. Hey, do you want to go get lunch? Sure, can you swipe me in though? I guess, but you don't have any more meal swipes? No, unfortunately I ran out. Well, what are you going to do for food? Right now I'm buying, but once my cash starts going down, I gotta look for other solutions. Oh well, I have the perfect solution. The Rutgers Food Pantry falls under the Off-Campus Living and Community Partnerships Office and is located at 39 Union Street on the College Avenue campus and is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. When you walk into the office, just tell the receptionist at the front that you are there to utilize the pantry. They will then assist you in figuring out what to take and how much to take based on your personalized needs. For more information, visit www.foodpantry.ruckers.edu. You can go to their Facebook page and like it for food pantry updates, or you can go to their website at foodpantry.ruckers.edu. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome back, Rutgers. Before the break, we asked, how many 24-hour libraries does Rutgers have? Now it's time to find out the answer. Alexandra Library on the College Avenue campus is the only 24-hour library on campus. Honestly, I can't count on my fingers how many times I spent um, pulling all-nighters at Alexander for midterms and finals. Oh yeah, I'm always at Alexander Library. I call it pretty much my second home. I probably go every day. Um, I'm not an all-nighter type of person, yeah. but I will spend many, many late nights there. But 
once the weather starts getting colder, it's harder for me to walk all the way there. It's a pretty far walk. So hopefully we don't have any too many cold days coming up, but the best way to check that out is to go over to Max with the weather. Hey, thank you so much, Cass. So unlike yesterday, we're starting to see a little bit of a cooler side of the weather that we haven't really been experiencing all that much. I know yesterday we saw in the 80s, temperatures in the 80s, and we even saw a little bit of rain yesterday. The rain's going to be sticking around, but the temperatures are going to start to drop as we head over into the end of the week and into this weekend with temperatures in the upper 60s, maybe even reaching the lower 70s this weekend. I'm going to talk more about that in the seven-day forecast. Game day, though, home game, second week in a row, Rutgers has a home football game, dry and beautiful conditions, so hopefully we could get a win, our second win of the season. Currently right now here at Rutgers Garden, 63 degrees is your temperature. More clouds and sun, a few peaks of sunshine, but mainly cloudy for the most part. Dew point temperatures in the lower 50s, so not feeling as muggy as what we felt yesterday with dew points in the 70s. So humidity is a little bit lower at 67%. Winds coming out of the northeast at roughly around 8 miles per hour. Radar is showing that we have a line of showers that's going to be making its way further to the northeast into our region, into surrounding areas like New York and Philadelphia by later this afternoon, but mostly into tonight. But we're going to have mainly mostly cloudy skies today for a high temperature of a roughly 75 degrees, so right around average for this time of year. A rain shower, a spy rain shower is possible later in the afternoon, but we're going to see a greater chance of rain this evening, winds out of the northeast at around 6 to 10 miles per hour. And as we head into tonight, this is when the rain starts to really pick up. Low temperature at around 60 degrees. We could see some brief heavy downpours possible. And that's why we have also have a flood watch in effect from 8 o'clock tonight into 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Winds coming onshore at the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Later in the show, I'm going to get to you guys about the five-day extended forecast along with the regional weather. Back to you guys. Well, today's pretty chilly, and yesterday was definitely weird weather, but I am excited for the game day weather. I know. I'm so excited for game day. It's going to be beautiful, but it seems like we're finally getting into the groove of fall, mm -hmm. finally getting that cold season, so stack up on sweaters. Oh, yeah. I mean, yesterday was a little odd just because it was mm -hmm. like, 80 something degrees yes. but raining so it was a mix of hot and muggy and it just wasn't my type of weather but i am looking for forward to fall i'm also looking forward to what we have coming up right after this you'll see some news and events and we'll also have some interviews stay tuned rockers did you lose your id not sure of what to do First, send an email to lostcard at aps.rutgers.edu to suspend your card so no one else can use it. Next, visit one of the RU Connection offices to have your lost or stolen ID card replaced. There is an office located on every campus. Records Hall on College Avenue is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Bush, Cook Douglas, and Livingston Campus Housing Offices are open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5 p.m. The Public Safety Card Office is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. You will need to pay for your new ID with $20 in RU Express. If you don't have RU Express, you can go to the cashier's office next to Records Hall before getting a new ID. Make sure to provide a form of unexpired government-issued photo identification when asking for a new ID. It's that easy to replace your ID. Make sure to keep it in a safe place so you don't lose it again. For more information and a more detailed explanation, visit pst.rutgers.edu slash rules.php. The University of, oh, welcome back, Rutgers. Um, it, that was an exciting little promo, and yeah. now we have exciting news and events to get to. The University of Pennsylvania has teamed up with Rutgers University to share an $18 million grant, which will be used to examine the effects of tobacco marketing on public health. Rutgers School of Public Health will be geared towards providing data that will protect public health and inform regulatory science issues related to tobacco control. Christina Del Nevo, the director for the Center of Tobacco Studies at the Rutgers School of Public Health, is the principal investigator of the project, and she has been committed to tobacco regulatory science since 2009. 
The center will focus on four primary and four cores, which include a rigorous assessment on smoking behaviors, experimental analysis of low nicotine cigarette advertising, analysis of cigarette packaging, and examining the effect of misleading cigarette descriptors. The Corps will provide continual surveillance of the tobacco industry. Well, Eva, I think that's super exciting. I mean, we know that smoking is growing and you see more students doing it here on campus, so it's definitely going to be good that we have someone studying the effects of the tobacco industry. Yeah, and I think this is such a great thing because it's important that people know what they're putting into their bodies. They know like the effects of what tobacco and nicotine and smoking will do to them, so I think this is really good for a lot of people. In the same vein of helping people, since the beginning of his tenure as president in 2012, Robert Barchi has worked tirelessly to constantly improve Rutgers University for both the students and the surrounding communities. With the development of a university-wide strategic plan and a corresponding master plan, President Barchi most certainly has a strong vision for the university's future. Recently, he accepted a request from the Rutgers University Board of Governors to remain as president of the university for at least the next two years. His vision, focus, and commitment have made Rutgers a much stronger university and a stronger asset to the state of New Jersey. We can't wait to see what else he has planned for the future. So I think this is really exciting and this is really great that um, President Barchi has decided to stay on for at least two more years because he's done so much for Rutgers already and for the surrounding communities. And with the implementation of the new master plan, I think it's really nice that he'll be here to like at least start the execution of it. Yeah, and you know, he knows the students, he knows the faculty, he knows mm -hmm. the community just because he's been here so long. So it's great that he's fully taking this role and really wants to pursue the Rutgers ahead. And the best way to stay involved in the community is to go out to all these Rutgers events. So the first event will be held this Wednesday, October 3rd at 6 o'clock. Make sure to stop on over to the Red Lion Cafe for Rupa's live vibes. This event allows students to feel free to show off and perform spoken word, comedy, or anything musical. There will also be free coffee and treats. Everyone, everyone deserves to share their voice. Hope to see you there. For more information, visit www.RuckersCampusLabs.com slash engage slash events. Well, Eva, I know before I've said that I've attended some verbal mayhem meetings, and this is in a way very similar. Um, people can go out and share their voice, they perform, and it's a great way to see all the talent we have here at Rutgers. Yeah, and I think it's a really good way for students to be engaged in the Rutgers community and to like, get to know each other, but it's also important to be engaged in other communities as well. If you're looking for a good way to spend your upcoming break, why not try community service? Rutgers University Alternative Breaks will be holding an information, information session this Wednesday, October 3rd from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the Douglas Student Center. Learn how you can possibly positively impact different communities through service while you cultivate your sense of social responsibility and leadership skills. For more information, you can go to leadership.rutgers.edu slash alternative breaks. So I think this is a really great way to spend your breaks, especially if you have nothing planned. You can go out and help other people and it's a really good way to um, just do good for other people and as well hone your leadership skills. Yeah, I've done a bunch of mission trips growing up um, in high school and even my first year of college. So an alternative break is kind of similar and I really want to go on one. So I'll definitely be attending that information meeting. But something else that I'm sad I missed out on that I really wish I would have attended was the silent disco. Yes, the silent disco. I actually went on that silent disco and it's really exciting. Um, so we're going to learn so much more about it right now. Hey Rutgers, it's welcome week and time to jump into the new school year. Have you ever been to a party and not like the style of music? Well, you won't have that problem here at the Silent Disco where everyone has a chance to choose their preferred style of music with these headphones. Let's go dance. So what brought you out here to the Silent Disco? Um, a bunch of friends and I, we wanted something to bond with and it seemed fun and we were like, okay, let's just go for it. So I'm actually an RA in the South Tower and uh, we put on this event every year to kind of get all the freshmen and new students, or just all students in general to come out and have a good time on campus. I think this event is important to have um, 
primarily because it is open to everyone of all walks of life. Um, oftentimes when people are at you know social events, it's kind of difficult for them to engage, but because we have the headphones that change colors, you'll naturally gravitate to people who have the same color as you and you'll interact with them, you'll get to know them. So what type of music were you listening to out there? I personally was listening to like the hip hop and the R&B. It was really fun um, and a lot of people get into it a lot, so it's cool to meet new people like that. There's a lot of Jersey Club music, there's a lot of R&B music, and there's a lot of music from the 2000s, like the early 2000s, so I like that kind of music. Also, it's you know easy for anyone to come and enjoy. So you don't, if you're an introvert and you don't want to necessarily engage with people, you have headphones, you're on the side doing your thing. If you're an extrovert, you can join po folks who have the same color as you and have a good time. If this event was held again next year, would you attend? I would. I would tell all my friends to come, enjoy the time, you know, just have fun and dance. Oh, definitely. I've been attending since my freshman year, so i definitely come out. You got some pop and music. Everyone else probably thinks we're crazy for dancing in silence, but only the coolest students know about the silent disco. So until word gets out, keep on painting the town scarlet. I'm Eva Anika Hellar, RUTV. Wow, Eva, that looks like such a fun event. It really was. Um, it was on the Livingston campus, and we went to to scope the scene, basically. And it was really exciting and really cool, because when you walked up, you didn't know what was happening. You just saw a bunch of flashing lights. <laughs> Until you put on the headphones, you didn't really know what was going on. I remember I saw a lot of students walking by who weren't part of it, and they were saying, how can you have a party without music? And I just wanted to stop them and be like, no, there is music. You just It's just in your headphones. So it was really fun. Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to attend. Mm -hmm. um, I've wanted to go every year, have yet to go, so it's definitely on my rocket list as something to do my senior year. Um, but it is kind of funny to see a bunch of people out in a field just dancing and there is no sound. I, I think it's just a hysterical sight if you're walking past. Yeah, and I definitely think you should go next year if you have the chance. I never knew about it before um, when I, before when I went this year. and. I kind of wish I knew previous years so I could have gone and experienced it more, but it was really exciting, really fun, really cool, and yeah, you're right, it really does look crazy, people dancing in a field by themselves with no music playing, but once you get into the groove of things and you find people with like matching headsets, it's really like cool because you get to make new friends and you're all like singing along to like... It seems like no music, but you have all the music in your ears. It's really, it was really fun. Well, I'm jealous you got to go. Yeah. But we have so much more to get to, especially an exciting interview with Kiwon Kok. So stay tuned, and we'll be back right after this. Oh, I, I just, oh, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can run today. I'm really busy, and wait, what? You're running there? I did not know this. I didn't even know that was a place. Do you know all the places on campus where you can work out and exercise? Well, we do, and we want to share that with you. Werblin Recreation Center is located on Bush Campus on the corner of Freelingheisen and Bartholomew Road. Werblin has everything from badminton courts to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The Livingston Recreation Center is located on Road 3 off of Joyce Kilmer Avenue. This center has a full weight room, hosts many different classes, and even has a spa located right inside to help you relax after a tough workout or maybe just a tough exam. The Cook Douglas Recreation Center is located on Beale Road across from the Cook Student Center. This recreation building comes equipped with a fun fitness center, pool, and racquetball courts for those of you who like sports with a little danger. The College Avenue Gym is located directly on College Avenue right next to the Student Center. This location has multiple gyms and basketball courts, power and conditioning rooms, and is the only location with a rock wall. The Rutgers Fitness Center is located on Easton Avenue on the College Avenue campus. This is the only location that is just a fitness center, so this might be the place for people looking to just work with weights and machines. Rutgers also has multiple bike and walking paths that run throughout all the campuses. You can find a map of all the paths at rudocs.rutgers.edu slash bikewalk. Most facilities are open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. until 11.30 p.m. Weekend hours vary, but you can find out more information about the facilities and their hours at recreation.rutgers.edu. 
Welcome back, Rutgers. Here with me is Ki Wong Kok, the Assistant Director of Education in the Center for Social Justice Education and LGBTQ Communities. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So I guess to jump right in, what is the Center for Social Justice Education and LGBTQ Communities? Uh, our center is a mini student center, so to speak. So we're a place where students can feel like it's a home away from home. We're actually one of four different cultural centers where we focus on primarily on gender and sexuality and social justice. Um, but anybody is welcome to come. It's always free coffee. We have we and all types of games. You can lounge, you can hang out. So it's pretty much same as a student center, but on a smaller scale on 17 Bartlett Street in New Brunswick. Well, I've never been there, but I definitely want to stop by. Oh, that yeah, sounds, come on it over. sounds beautiful. And the free coffee, I'm definitely in for it. So, do you want to tell me a little bit more about the programs you have, such as the Diversity Peer Educator Program? Yes, yeah, so this particular Diversity Peer Educators Program um, was created with the Office of Residence Life and the Center for Social Justice Education in LGBT Communities. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Darnell Thompson, who is the Diversity Education and Outreach Coordinator for Residence Life, as well as an amazing graduate student, Ian Ulip, who helped to create and implement this program. And this program gives uh, Scarlet Knights an opportunity to become peer educators of various topics and subtopics in diversity inclusion and social responsibility um, as well as the opportunity to facilitate all types of courageous conver conversations around our campus. So how is the best way then for students to get involved? Okay so there's a few ways. Um, one you have to have a 2.7 GPA. Um, the second way is that you need to be in good academic and judicial standing um, and you need to attend at least one of our four mandatory uh, information sessions which the first one is tonight um, and that will start at 9 p.m. but they can also go to studentaffairs.rutgers.edu forward slash DPE and learn about everything. Well, so everyone should stop on out to that meeting tonight if they want to get involved. No, it sounds like a great time. And there's many ways to get involved, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the goals of the program, the Diversity Educator Program? So we've done a lot of research about diversity per educator programs around the country, and I think everyone has a similar goal that uh, each peer can build another peer. And so it's a little different when it comes from an adult or a, a faculty member, but we believe that peer builds peers. And so the goal is really to come on board and build a more safe and inclusive um, environment here at Rutgers University where people can learn and be educated about social justice in a very um, easy and tangible way rather than being a heart topic um, and also just kind of continue to make our, our campus a brave place for people to live authentically and to live free and be seen. No, I love that. And I love that it's a safe space for students to Absolutely. go to. So that's definitely nice. And are there any other programs that the service offers? So the center offers many programs. Um, one we like to highlight a lot is our Let's Talk Hours. We have a uh, campus-based or a community-based um, counselor who comes to our office and does informal counseling hours um, with students. And so that is pretty cool. Um, actually, every cultural center has one. Um, we do a, a whole bunch of programming throughout the year. Um, we're just a space where we have so much going on and I encourage everyone to go to socialjustice.records.edu and learn about us. Now I know you said you have the meeting tonight, um, but are there any other events coming up? Oh yeah, so through the Center for Social Justice, um, October actually is going to be our month for Project Allyship. And so this program goes hand in hand with that theme. Um, we're still finalizing all of the, the opportunities to get involved with that month and its events. Um, so we'll be posting everything um, either on our Facebook page or socialjustice.rutgers.edu. Okay, well, everyone should look out for those events coming up. Absolutely. They sound like a great time. Yes. Well, Kiwan, thank you for coming out and talking to me, me and telling us about the Social Justice Center and the services. Um, but we'll be back with the weather right after this. The Rutgers Libraries have some of the biggest resources this university has to offer. There are nine libraries located throughout all campuses with convenient hours to fit any student schedule. The Alexander Library on College Ave campus is open 24 hours, but before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m., a valid Rutgers ID is required. The Art Library, located on College Ave behind Scott Hall, is open from 8.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. The Carr Library on Livingston campus is open 24 hours, but before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m., a valid Rutgers ID is required. The Chang Library on the Douglas campus is open from 8.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. The Mabel Smith Douglas Library on the Douglas campus is open 24 hours, but before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m., a valid Rutgers ID is required. The Library of Science and Medicine on Bush campus is open 24 hours, 
but before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m., a valid Rutgers ID is required. The math and physics library inside of the Hill Center on Bush campus is open from 8.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. There's plenty of space for everyone at the library, so come inside. Welcome back, Rutgers. Well, wasn't that exciting, Eva? I, I always love talking to Q1. He knows so much about the community, and he's a great spokesperson for the community. Yeah, and I think he's a really good resource, especially for students who are looking for a home or looking for a place where there are other people like them. So I think it was really great he came on the show to like speak to us and share insight, especially with the with October, the month mm -hmm. of allyship. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so many people a part of the community, so now they have this safe place to go to where they can be brave and all bond together, which he explained, and the diversity program mm -hmm. sounds super like empowering and everything like that, so. Yeah, and he said the first meeting's tonight, right? Yes, okay. so a lot of people hopefully will go out and stop by. It sounds yes. like it will be a great time. And something else very exciting is always the change in weather, so we'll head over to Max with the weather. Thanks, Cass. So before I talked about the local picture of the weather, and now we're going to talk about the regional picture of the weather. So in terms of how it's going to be today, a lot of the rain is going to stay further to the south of us throughout the entire day, but we could see some spy showers start to make its way into southern New Jersey and to the Philadelphia metropolitan area by late this afternoon. Temperature at around 69 degrees in Philadelphia, further down south into the D.C. metropolitan areas, 66 degrees with some consistent steady rain for the most part. But as you head further to the north, it actually clears up a little bit for the entire day. So 73 degrees in Syracuse with some partly cloudy skies, 71 in Scranton, Pittsburgh mostly cloudy at 67 degrees. But you could see up and down the east coast, you could see you could see no rain expected in the forecast. But as we head into tonight, it becomes a little bit more widespread and covers much of the northeast into portions of New England, with the exception of maybe the Pittsburgh area, 54 degrees, mostly cloudy skies though, but no rain expected in the forecast. And as we head further to the east, up in New York, up down in New York City, 61 degrees with some showers, 60 degrees in Philadelphia, Washington DC, 60 degrees as well, Flood watch is in effect for the entire region, stretching all the way down into northern Virginia. As we head further to the north, it gets a little bit cooler up in the upper elevations. 51 degrees is your low in Syracuse. Over in Albany, 52 degrees. And further eastward into Boston, 57 degrees. Mostly cloudy skies, but no rain expected in the forecast until maybe later overnight. I'm going to step out for your seven-day forecast, and Friday is the only day that we're going to see some showers, mainly during the morning hours. But as we head into this weekend, a gorgeous weekend ahead. Temperatures right around average, 71 degrees is your high for your game day in New Brunswick. But temperatures are going to be lowering into the upper 40s, so if you're planning on going out, Definitely bring a sweatshirt, bring a jacket if need be. Sunday, another nice day, 70 degrees is your high. And as we head into week five here at Rutgers, on Monday, 75 degrees. So a nice way to start off next week. And to keep updated with all the weather updates, we're on channel 23.1 every 15 minutes. We're on Facebook at RU Weather Watcher on Facebook.com. You can go to our Twitter page at Twitter.com at RUTV Weather Watcher. And don't forget to use the hashtag RUWeather. Also subscribe to our YouTube page. Go to YouTube.com, search up RUTV Weather Watcher. I'm Max Hazan. Enjoy the rest of week four, Rutgers, and enjoy the rest of this weekend. Back to you guys. Well, I'm super excited for that sunny day for the game, but not looking forward to that night. That's really chilly. 40s, that's a drastic job, drop. I know. I definitely will be staying in, or if I go out, I'm going to wear a sweater, jacket, get my whole fall oh my outfit gosh, yeah. together. Yeah. I need to stop home and get yeah. more long sleeves. I'm, so, I'm still so ready for the kind of summer weather, so I am not prepared for this cold weather. Yeah, I'm still so in denial that we're going into fall and winter, so I still try to wear summer clothes as much as oh, I can. Me too. I'm not, not a big fan of the winter. But, well, Rutgers, that will do it for today's episode. For more events happening this week, you can go to getinvolved.ruckers.edu or ruevents.ruckers.edu. Follow us on social media by searching RU Network and follow us on Twitter by searching at Wake Up Ruckers. We love hearing from you. Thank you, Kiwan, for joining us and speaking to us more. I'm Eva Nikahilar. And I'm Cassandra Shees. Thank you for joining us this morning, and we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next week.